Yes. So uh, we all know that the internet is kind of centralized at this point. All the infrastructure is controlled by large corporations. And that is kind of understandable because you know, the capital requirements to start a network, they're kind of expensive. Wireless ISPs manage. You know, the cost of starting a wireless ISP is not that much. But they reach a point where their software does not scale well enough, and it takes too much time to administrate. So like, for example, why currently in the US or in other, in other places of the world, uh, you only have access to one or two ISPs? It could be possible that you could have access to four or five ISPs if you, if you choose to. And, uh, we don't live in a world where we have only two restaurants or two gas stations. We live in a world with multiple restaurants and gas stations. So the purpose of Altia is to provide this last mile connection from the tier two data center to uh, the end user. So ISPs, you know, what they do is that they buy and sell internet. Uh, this is what our router does. We created a firmware that buys and sells internet or bandwidth from uh, other routers. This is what ISPs do. Uh, it's also a peer-to-peer -peer ad hoc network. So what this means is that you can add nodes uh, on an ad hoc basis. So that means there's a new node. You can automatically add it to the network and extending the node or the network in an organic fashion. It's also a last mile software package. So what does this mean? This means that um, an ISP can administrate the network with the software that we provide. It's also clear to, it's also important to mention that Althea is not an alternative internet infrastructure. It's, there's still gonna be tier one and tier two that that's not our focus. Our focus is the last mile. And it's not like a, a darknet or a um, different protocol within the internet. It's just focusing on the last mile. So we use OpenWRT. We're trying to target as many uh, devices we want. Uh, so our firmware is based out of OpenWRT. Uh, we, this is our, s our main component, which we call Rita. And it's in charge. It's using a distance vector um, algorithm that's a fork of Babel. And Rita is what is our main component in our software. Uh, we also use uh, WireGuard as our VPN, and we also made a, a Web3 like client called Clarity. And we're also using payment channels between each routers, between the different routers. So what does Althea bring to the table compared to other stuff? Ideally, it changes how the infrastructure is built. You know, users will be able to buy their own equipment. Users who own the network equipment that they acquire. It also changes how network layouts are set up. Right now, you know, it's very easy to add a new network using our, our software. Or I mean, it's very easy to add a node using our, our software. Um, so what do you need to, s to set up a network? Uh, the most important part is to get a tier two uh, backbone connection. Uh, this is where you get your physical interconnection. Uh, and from this, you can start growing a, a network from this uh, backbone internet connection. It can also be a, a resellable business internet connection or a, a data center, a co-locate data center. Um, we estimate, like for example, $10,000 can start a network uh, $3,000, for example, a quote in Portland, Oregon, would get you about 10 gigabytes per second and at least at a data center. So this, and then the other $7,000 would be for uh, the networking equipment needed to start the network. Uh, and really, the, the performance that you get from, from using our software is dependent on the hardware you get. For example, we got a, a very short range, one gigabyte uh, per second antennas, and our software was performing at 870 megabytes per second. And then it really depends on how much you want to spend on your equipment. We really don't care on the, the hardware use. We're pretty universally hardware agnostic. 
uh, here I'm just going to talk about the different type of nodes that exist in our network, or in our Altia, typical Altia network. We have the user router, which is just basically, it's a home user. Uh, they, just, they just have a router, and they deposit crypto or ether. We, we're focusing on ether for now, but we're probably going to be using DAI uh, later on. And they just have to make sure that they have uh, enough currency in their router. Then we have, for example, the intermediate node. This intermediate node is servicing five other user nodes. And it's possibly making extra, extra money on the side because it's, it's charging the other users around you for the internet that it's selling to them. And then we have the big antenna. That's the gateway node. Oh, wait. Um, the intermediate node, it's really important that you price it correctly. Because if you make it too expensive, then other people might want to compete with you. It's like, oh, you know, this person is charging too much. I think I can provide a better service, and I can charge a little bit less. And we totally encourage that. That's the main point of Altia, which is allow people to become or compete in the existing networks. Or, uh, let me hold there, go back. OK. The, then the gateway, the gateway is where the backbone internet connection is at. Uh, basically, this is where, this is one of the most important parts of the network. This is, you know, it's crucial that you have many, but usually for now, it's probably only going to be one. It's where the main organization starts. This is where you usually s start growing the network from. Th it's, well, OK. Then we have another type of node. There's four types. So the last one is an exit node, which is not pictured. But when you see the internet at the bottom, all the bits and bytes going out, um, there's an exit node. And this exit node is basically like a virtual private server. The, this exit node serves two purposes. One is to make sure that all the data is encrypted from the router, from the end user, all the way to the exit node. So that way, all the nodes in between don't see the information or the data transmitted or the sites you're visiting. And it also serves another purpose, which is to report back to the user node or the users the quality of the service they're receiving. Because it could be sometimes that you know, some of the intermediary nodes are cheating. It's like, you know, they're advertising this certain quality, but they're not actually delivering it. And the exit node can tell back, it's like, oh, this is, your performance is off. Um, you can use many types of antennas here. I just want to highlight, uh, it, we really don't care. You, get, you can plug in two different Altia routers using uh, just an Ethernet cord, and the, and the firmware will automatically determine the peer-to-peer -peer connection, uh, the ad hoc connection. Uh, the, the one in the center is a gateway node. Those are sector antennas. And then the other two on the sides, those are just point-to-point uh, -point antennas. Uh, we currently have two deployments. We have one in Medellin, Colombia, and another one in Klatskanai, Oregon. Uh, the one in Klatskanai, Oregon is much more ahead. Uh, it already has peer-to-peer. -peer, it already has bandwidth payments. And it also already has a DAO that's using to administrate this network. Um, most of the issues with these locations is just the accessibility. It's really hard to reach those locations. Um, this is why ISPs don't provide internet. It's just there's no, there's no incentive to uh, reach those locations. On um, the bottom left, yeah, bottom left, the, the, blue, uh, the blue dot, that's the gateway node. And then the other blue dots on the top, those are the intermediary nodes. And the houses around those are the user nodes. And th the exit node is somewhere in the cloud um, in a private server. Um, one of the biggest challenges has been the exposure of crypto. You know, it's hard to teach them how to use cryptocurrencies. It's, it's a big hurdle for them to overcome. Usability is a big issue. Um, so this is where I introduce what is a subnet DAO, which is a combination of a wireless ISP plus a DAO. It has two purposes. It administrates the community network. So it's in charge of administrating the network that is where it started. It protects against Sybil attacks. And it has two purposes. It has to obtain the backhaul, and it has to provide a good uptime or customer services. So a subnet is like the ISP, and the DAO is what administrates this ISP. Uh, we envision that users will probably pool money or have a local community using this subnet DAO to allow it to grow. 
um, for and to become part of a of a subnet DAO, you have to pay a subnet fee, and this fee is depending on the type of DAO that exists. Uh, we envision, like for example, there can be a big megacorp DAO, and this DAO is behaves like typical ISPs. Nowadays, you know, users don't have to worry about setting up the router because the ISP does it for you. They charge a little bit more, but the service is really good. Then you can have like the Bob and Friends subnet DAO, and this subnet DAO is much more relaxed. The fees, the subnet DAO fees are cheaper, but you just have to make sure when Bob goes, helps, helps you set up your network, your, your router, you just give him, you know, you invite him to a barbecue or give him some beer. That's all that's needed. And then we also have the Anarcho DAO. Uh, the Anarcho DAO is like very minimal fees, but you, you should not expect any support. And if you ask for help in IRC, they will probably laugh at you. <laughs> um, users can pick any subnet DAO. They're, like, there's n they're not limited to, if there are multiple options for a subnet DAO, you can be part of, of many subnet DAOs. It is also important for a subnet DAO, it has to be profitable. Um, or else, wait, I can't see. Yeah, it needs to be profitable. It needs to be decentralized. So we inv there has to be more than a single uh, gateway uh, node just to make sure that it's more robust. And it needs to be incentivized. And what I mean by this, it needs to allow users to uh, grow the network on their own accord organically. So like, for example, if you see on the bottom right, that person, that neighbor is connecting the neighbor because he's incentivized because he's going to earn some money to pay his own internet. Um, ideally, what Altia does is that it lowers the prices of current internet connections, not because of the, our billing software, but mostly because we make starting a new network really cheap. We allow anyone to start a new ISP and just through competition. Um, if we have a huge list, uh, we, we are successful in our mission. We expect to have a TCR of all the subnet DAOs that exist just to make sure that they are you know, providing the quality that they advertise. Um, I would like to thank Yonda for the designs. She's, she helped us design this, but right now uh, we're implementing this new design. Here you can see the different nodes that exist uh, in a subnet DAO. Um, but in reality, what we call a subnet DAO is just basically an Aragon app. We made this Aragon app, and you know, users start a normal Aragon and then install this Altia Aragon app, and voila, they have a subnet DAO. And we only have one deployed in Cloud Connect Oregon for now. Um, this is some uh, generate reports. I think this is valuable for us because probably most of our customers, the people that are going to be using this subnet DAO, are going to be uh, NGOs, companies, or co-ops. So this is something that's valuable for us. Uh, this is how uh, subnet DAO organizers can collect fees. Anyone, so this is the way the subnet DAO subscription fees work. It's basically like an escrow contract. So users send money to the smart contract, and it starts deducting on a per block basis depending on the fee. Um, so it's uh, it's it's just an escrow contract. Um, sometimes the subscription fee needs to be changed because uh, crypto is going to crypto, and it's going to be uh, extremely volatile. Hopefully, once once we integrate Dai, that won't be an issue. Um, and finally, this is how you add a node. Uh, the way w this works is that each subnet DAO is going to have a, a net mask, an IPv6 net mask. And it just makes sure that the, the nodes within this network can connect to only the nodes that are also part of the same network. And the way you administrate this network is with the subnet DAO. Uh, subnet DAO organizers can add you know, a nickname, the IPv6 address, the IPv6 address and the Ethereum address. Um, another thing, we're also taking advantage of Aragon's uh, ACL, Access Control List, it's, which is took a while to get used to, but it's really useful. So right now, we only have three roles. Uh, we have the add uh, field service role. And this field service role, it's just in charge. It can only add nodes. So it can only add nodes to the subnet DAO list. And it can be any address. That's how we envision it. But since Aragon is so uh, flexible, 
you know, it could be also through voting or some other entity. Uh, we also have two other roles, which is the subnet dial administrator and the delete nodes role. And we envision that this has to go through the voting of the DAO before it can be executed. Um, finally, we hope that this interface, this Aragon app, provides a way to easily administrate decentralized ISPs or Althea ISPs and just make it easy for, yeah, just make it easy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.